Hello and welcome to the Daily Royal. My name is Shelby and I have been a royal watcher for the past 10 years. In this podcast, I talk about the daily events of seven of the European monarchies. So I talk about Belgium, the UK, Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. I upload Monday through Friday with occasional bonus episodes here and there. Today we are going to be talking about all of the events from Tuesday, November 16th of 2021. And somehow, today was also kind of chill. Like, not quite as chill as yesterday. We do have a good amount to talk about. But, like, for the most part, it was chill. Uh, Which I'm super kind of okay with. Um, Obviously, it just makes some of this easier when things are super calm and super, super chill like this. Um... But of course, like, there were events, there was an official visit, like, there was a state visit to Spain, but like, overall, it was a chill day. Um, So, we are going to jump in, we are moving straight to the British royal family. Um, So today in Belgium, there were some audiences, but nothing too major um, that we're going to talk about. So we are going to jump right in with the British royal family. In the UK, it was the official start of the Autumn Royal Tour that the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall are taking, or making, I guess, rather, to Jordan, um, and then Egypt later on in, like, the next, um, so it's a four-day trip in total, um, at least today, and I think most of tomorrow will be spent in Jordan, and then probably two days in Egypt. I'm not sure. The entire program, to my knowledge, has not been released. Um, so... That is where we're at. That's where we're starting from. Um, So this morning in Jordan, the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall arrived. They attended the official welcome ceremony um, at the Royal Palace in Jordan. They were welcomed by King Abdullah, Queen Rania, and Crown Prince Hussein, who is the oldest son of Abdullah and Rania. Um, And then they held like just a catch-up kind of meeting, like a, hey, how's it going? How's the kids? How's the family? How's the grandkids? Um, At least, you know, Charles has grandkids. So um, that was like the first piece. And then King Abdullah and the Prince of Wales and Crown Prince Hussein uh, started what looked to be a really intense bilateral, um, which is a meeting that is pretty common in some state visits. It's not always common. Um, It doesn't always happen, but um, it is a meeting that focuses on the relationship between the two countries and kind of uh, further discusses how the two countries can work together to tackle big issues. Um, Most of that was kept private, Uh, The Jordan, the Royal House of Jordan released some photos of that meeting, but like not a a ton of details on it. Um, And the Clarence House uh, social media team and media team in general um, only released that it happened. So while uh, the men were doing that, uh, Queen Rania and the Duchess of Cornwall visited the uh, Queen Rania Family and Children's Center, um, and I just want to mention, like, a lot of this, I'm going to mention King Abdullah or Queen, Queen Rania first, um, and that is simply because their titles are higher. Um, obviously, I don't talk about them on this podcast, like, I don't talk about their day-to-day events, um, however, we do still respect that they have higher tit- titles, so, like, in my descriptions and everything that you're seeing online, the way I'm talking about it, Most of the time, they're going to be first. Um, I just wanted to briefly interject and say that. Um, And then, so what was kind of fun about this is, um, first of all, the British press 
lost their mind over this. I don't know why. Um, but Queen Rania drove the the two of them to the family center uh, in her Tesla, which I loved. Um, but everyone was making such a big deal about, like, no one else was in the car. I'm like, meanwhile, they were in essentially a motorcade situation. They were followed very closely. Um, and I'm sure there was someone ahead. And, like, things were very chill. Um, but, yeah, the British press was making, like, a huge deal about it. And it cracked me up. Um, I was like, yeah, so she drove them. It's totally fine. Um, also, like, what a time to catch up. So they they did that. They visited the center, which has the ultimate goal to reduce child abuse and strengthen families. Um, and these are of families within Jordan, as well as um, Palestinian and Syrian families who have um, become refugees in Jordan um, as well. So that was their event. Um, and then later on in the day, the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall visited the River Jordan, um, which is presumably, um, I think there is enough evidence behind all of this to back it up. Um, this is where John the Baptist baptized Jesus, um, and is where, oh, like the water from this river is, um, used in just about every single royal family, um, for their baptisms because it is um, obviously holy water to people of religious background, um, because this is where, uh, you know, Jesus Christ himself was baptized. So obviously the water is something special. Um, so they visited there, um, and then in the evening, so not a whole lot has been shared about this yet. I expect most of it to be shared tomorrow. Um, but they, uh, the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall attended an evening, like, dinner, banquet kind of thing. It wasn't a full, like, state banquet, um, because this isn't a state visit, but it was a banquet, um, hosted by the king and queen, uh, to Charles and Camilla. So, um, and I just wanted to briefly talk about, you know, I'm, we're, we're about to, in a couple of segments, talk about the state visit to Spain from Italy. Um, and, you know, this month is state visit month. Um, for right now, for what I would presume is the remainder of the Queen's life, uh, these are what the outgoing quote-unquote state visits are right now from the UK. Um, Queen Elizabeth does not travel further than the UK. Um, maybe occasionally she'll go to the Ir Irish Republic. Um, but beyond that, she doesn't go anywhere um, and hasn't for a while. And so when the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall go places, it's as close to a state visit from the UK as you can get. Um, given everything. So while up until, you know, the pandemic, um, the queen received incoming state visits, she has not done an outgoing in a, in a while. Um, it is unknown when she will, if she will resume incoming. Um, there was a state visit from the emperor and empress of Japan, uh, scheduled for May of 2020. Um, that obviously due to the pandemic was canceled, but just so like we're all on the same page, this is what a, 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 a visit is right now in the UK. Um, there are no state visits. So the reason I'm going to talk about this like it's much more of a state visit is because in reality, it is. It just doesn't get the glorious title because Charles is not the king. Um, so it's not, he's not the head of state. So it's just a little different. Um, 
So, anyway, that is what was going on in the British royal family. There was nothing going on in Denmark, so now we are going to jump to the Netherlands. The Netherlands. So today was an interesting hodgepodge, essentially, of events in the Dutch royal family. There are some digital visits, there's some in-person things, there's some, you know, heir to the throne things. So we're just going to start, um, and there's just kind of no rhyme or reason to this other than order of precedence. Um, so, first thing for King Willem Alexander is he received the first copy of a new biography on Will, Will, uh, that, Willem von Oranje, uh, which is Will, Willem of Orange, who I think is the first king of the Netherlands. At least I think that's who this book is. So, almost every single king has been Willem, uh, or Willem, and then one of the Willems had like four children all named Willem but then also had a daughter named Wilhelmina so there's that um and then we kind of branched off um and Willem Alexander is King Willem Alexander like that is his official name so he is not King Willem the whatever I think it would be the fifth or something um and so we'll see if that tradition is broken or not. Um, but I think that's who this book is on. Um, so he received the first copy of that, which is a 20-year research project, essentially. Um, and then later on in the day, he did a digital working visit to SIDN, which is the cybersecurity company that maintains the .nl domain, which is the domain used across the all of the Netherlands like when you type in a website that you want to be a Dutch website like their news station is um nos.nl um the royal household is .nl um like it's it's the thing you know in the U.S. for some reason we have .go .com um but they have .nl so um he visited that uh through Zoom or some video conference equivalent, um, because as I mentioned, the Netherlands is in this weird, uh, pandemic shutdown kind of thing right now. It's not a full shutdown, not, you're not required to work from home, but certainly if you can, do, um, and so a lot of that is going to be happening over the next three weeks from the Dutch Royals, um, but then we also had today... Queen Maxima delivering the Prince Bernard Cultural Foundation Prize for 2021. And this was an in-person event. Um, I do think it ended up being probably scaled down, but it was an in-person event. So she delivered that prize to IVN Nature Education, which is um, an organization that makes nature super accessible um, to everybody. So they conduct different education workshops, hikes, etc. throughout the country um, for education reasons. I mean, so people can learn about the world they live in. So that was really cool. Um, but then in my ever-growing love of the preparation of the heirs to the throne, um, which has been strong for a long time, but, like, certainly is getting stronger as they're all becoming full-grown people. Um, there has been a book, and I think I've talked about this part, um, written on the Princess of Orange, or Princess Amalia, um, that will, that is being released in relation to her 18th birthday, which is in a month. Actually, it's in less than a month. Um, and she participated in interviews and, like, it was a very cooperative biography that has been done on her. 
Um, so today, I think, I don't think it's out, out. It, it might be, um, but it is, at least the pressers are out, so the people who, um, need to read it get to so it might come out either today or friday i don't if they follow a similar launch schedule to the u.s for books and such um but there was the announcement that there are these all these new pictures um in it that the dutch royal house has made public um including amalia's first quote tiara moment um so this happened when she was 10? No. Ish. I think she had, she was nine going on 10, I think. Um, or maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, it was in 2012. She might've been eight. It's hard to know exactly. Um, but she, her mother was going on a trip, uh, in the Royal watching community. We think it was, uh, the Royal wedding in Luxembourg because it was October of 2012. Um, but Amalia being all of eight, nine or 10, whatever it ends up being, uh, decided to <laughs> put on her mom's tiara before it was packed. And, uh, you know, it's just magic. It, she talked about at least from an excerpt in the book that she um, loves the jewelry, like, is, <laughs> can name tiaras from other royal families, like, you show her one, and she's like, oh, that's this from this family, um, which I want to see her do that with, like, all the British royal family tiaras, because they're hard, um, you know, certain countries are easy because they only have a small selection, but, like, also if she knows all of her countries, because those ones are hard, there's a lot, um, but, like, it's magic, um, so that was a really cool thing. She also took part in, like, a small video catch-up with the author, um, talking about the book and how excited she is. Um, she talks a lot about, or the book shares a lot about her realization of, you know, what her future is. Um, and she says it really happened when her dad became king. Um, and she says, you know, it didn't fully register, like... Not everything was registering, but because she was, I think this is where she was nine, almost ten-ish. Um, but she, she says that she wanted to do what she could to help. Um, she didn't really understand what that meant, but she wanted to help. Um, and so that is when her, like, kind of sense of duty started. Um, and she says it's grown since then. And there's even a quote um, that says, I am at the service of my country and I give the life, give my life to the Netherlands. So like, we've heard similar things to this from other heirs to the throne. Um, Princess Elizabeth from Belgium talks about her commitment on her 18th birthday. She did that in her speech. Um, Princess Leonor, when she gives her Princess of Astorius address, like, this year she talked about um, her ever-growing commitment to her role um, and preparation and, like, um, how committed she is to learning and being excellent. Um, and I'm sure when she reaches that 18th birthday milestone, it'll be, you know, a very similar, like, I give my life to Spain kind of thing, but I, I very much think that this is going to be something that when Amalia very far down the road becomes queen, we'll see this again and again. Um, and so I just thought that was really awesome. I have most of the photos that they have released, um, up on the website, thedailyroyal.com. So you can definitely go check those out. Um, I personally will not be purchasing the book because I do not speak Dutch, um, if there ever is an English translation, of course, I'll, I'll purchase it. But for right now, I, uh, I don't have it, nor will I. Um, so that is what was going on in the Netherlands. Again, a very hodgepodgey kind of day, but a very exciting uh, finish. So with that, we are going to move over to the Spanish royal family.
Spain. In Spain today, King Felipe and Queen Letizia welcomed the Italian president to Spain for a official two-day state visit that coincides with the Kotec Europe meeting tomorrow um, that the Itali Italian president will be attending. Um, so this morning they hosted the official welcome ceremony for the president and his daughter who serves as essentially first lady, um, the president of Italy. Um, his wife passed in 2012 and so his daughter has been basically serving as the first lady since then um, and accompanies him on big events like this. So they were welcomed to the royal palace um, with the royal guard. Um, and various Spanish and Italian officials who were taking part in the state visit. Um, and then, uh, so basically what this looks like is they welcome them, they say hello, um, they stand on a podium, King Felipe and the visiting head of state will review the Royal Guard, um, which is a very long journey in Spain for some reason. It's like takes up the entire uh, Plaza de Almeria, um, which is huge, or at least it looks huge. I don't know if it actually is, um, but it takes up the whole thing. And um, so they walk that and then there is like a brief military uh, parade of the Royal Guard. Um, there's a meeting of, again, the people who are taking part in the state visit. So like on one side is the Spanish participants, which include the prime minister, um, the presidents of the Congress of Deputies and the Senate um, and other officials, typically obviously the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, and then they go and meet the Italian side. I don't know who was accompanying the Italian president. Um, but they met and then there's a small like catch up, get to know you kind of meeting. Um, and then they send off the president who then went on and like laid a, a wreath at the monument um, in Spain uh, and lots of other things. And then also in the afternoon, King Felipe hosted an audience with the president um, and then they hosted a lunch for the president and his daughter at Zarzuela. And then we get to the evening, which is my new favorite thing. No. Um, so if you bet that it was a tiara event, you are correct. Um, this is Queen Letizia's first tiara event since October of 2019 which is a very long time, um, like a very long time. So two years and a month uh, since she was in a tiara last, which, you know, is a long time. Um, and it was, it was great. Uh, so they welcomed the president and his daughter um, to the royal palace again for this time the banquet dinner. Um, at the dinner, both King Felipe and the president gave speeches focused on the friendly relationship between the two countries and the commitment to a strong unified Europe that they share. Um, they are both in unique-ish experiences being southern countries that kind of maintain the European border. So Europe, while individual countries, function kind of as a whole in that once you get to Europe and like immigrate, you can kind of just be a citizen of Europe, um, provided you're in the EU, because there are a lot of, like, open borders to EU citizens. Um, so it's, it's very easy to, to do things there, um, once you get there. But it's, um, we'll talk a little bit about this, too, in the Dutch royal visit to Greece. Um, the, the southern countries are kind of the the hard line on the border um, because they neighbor uh, other continents and so it's they have a harder time with the immigration side of things. So um, you know they both 
kind of discuss that and again just the commitment to a strong unified Europe all in all around so um that was the state visit it felt very strange and this is this is really how incoming state visits kind of feel um as I have learned a little bit more um incoming state visits the heads of state don't always take part in every single thing um you know it's been a little bit different in Sweden they take part in like every single event with the visiting head of state um and obviously so did Norway when the Dutch royal family came but like with Spain it's all very broken up um so you know while the president had other events you know Felipe and Letizia really just had something morning afternoon and evening uh with breaks in between so that was um it's a little it's just a little different but it's still lovely um also just like yay tiara event um it's my favorite uh can't wait to see more next week um when they travel to sweden for that state visit so that is what was going on in spain um speaking of sweden there was one event we're just going to briefly cover it because there's like nothing i can actually say um but king carl gustav received two outgoing ambassadors and an audience so he received the ambassadors from uh I just want to make sure I get this right. The from Uruguay and Cyprus, um, just for outgoing audiences. You know, thank you for for coming. Thank you for your work. Nice to meet you. All of that, presumably. So that is what was going on in Sweden. That brings us to the end of today's episode. I think we're gonna kind of trend along this calmer week kind of thing. Um, we do have a province visit from Belgium tomorrow which is super exciting, but then like other things are super duper chill. So with that, um, I am going to end this episode. I will talk to you all tomorrow. Have a fantastic Wednesday. Bye.